Remember bridge cameras? Once famous for bridging the gap between point and shoots and DSLRs, they are fading from the market. Let's look at why bridge cameras went from hot to not, but also what made them so cool in the first place. History Bridge cameras started to appear in the late 1990s and early 2000s as digital photography took off. They were meant to be superior to compact point and shooters by allowing better image quality and more control without becoming complex or expensive like SLRs. Most commonly, they had zoom lenses, which are not interchangeable with manual control options. Viewfinders are available as electronic ones, among other functions such as zooming capabilities, while still maintaining their portability. Some of these brands, including Panasonic, Sony, and Canon Fujifilm, among others, have emerged as leaders in this field. The name bridge camera attests to its being an interface between two unrelated types of devices. It really served amateurs who wanted to enhance their skills but didn't want to jump into the world of DSLRs with changeable lenses. In addition, it was equipped with versatile tools like powerful zooming facilities and various shooting modes, making it suitable for wildlife shots or just landscapes. Use Case There were many reasons why bridge cameras appealed so much to photography enthusiasts and semi-professional photographers alike. Their most observable characteristic was having a zoom range that went beyond what many standard DSLR lenses could offer. As a result, one does not need additional lenses, nor do they need to be changed during remote photo sessions like sports events or wildlife captures. Another key benefit was that they were user-friendly. The majority had manual settings, which attracted professional photographers while at the same time featuring auto modes for beginners. Therefore, they could be used by many people with different levels of skill, including those who had never taken a photo before, except for once when they used their phone's camera. Through this viewfinder, one could get an idea of how pictures would look in terms of exposure or other settings before shooting, which was more convenient than optical ones. Moreover, bridge cameras were relatively compact and lightweight compared to DSLRs with equivalent zoom lenses. Their portability made them an excellent choice for travel photography. They also typically featured good battery life, further enhancing their appeal for on-the-go shooting. Drawback Despite all these advantages, bridge cameras had some drawbacks that resulted in their loss of popularity. One such problem was sensor size. Most resorted to smaller sensors, making it impossible for them to be as effective under low-light conditions as digital SLRs were. Commonly found flaws included reduced dynamic range and higher noise levels. Then again, the fixed lens system proved to be a limiting factor in the development of bridge cameras as ph graphic devices of a wide variety since zooming lenses became invaluable. It was not possible for someone desiring a specific type of lens, like macro or ultra-wide angles, to find what he wanted from these types. Finally, the rise of highly sophisticated smartphone cameras has significantly eroded the market share of all dedicated cameras, including bridge ones. With multi-lens systems, advanced image processing technology, and powerful sensors, today's smartphones are capable of fulfilling most casual photographers' convenience needs while maintaining high-quality images, in many cases offering both aspects at once. Reasons why it's gone The deterioration of the digital camera industry can be attributed to several reasons. These include the rapid improvement in technology witnessed by smartphones and other types of cameras, such as DSLRs. Due to their manageable size, ease of manipulation, and increasing development in image quality for mobile gadgets, smartphones have become a choice for everyday photography. Smartphones offer features like AI-assisted photo enhancements, customizable lenses, and the ability to interact with social media, among others. Traditional cameras, including bridge cameras, cannot match. At the same time, there was a sea change in the camera market through the introduction of mirrorless innovations. Mirrorless technological advancement has seen its rise in popularity because it allows photographers to switch from one lens to another on the go, even though it comes with a smaller design compared to that of DSLRs. These devices provide better image quality, 
bigger sensors, and more flexible lens options that could compete with both DSLRs and bridge cameras. Sony, Fujifilm, and Panasonic have all given mirrorless cameras much attention, hence reducing the significance of bridge cameras. Also, among the factors leading to their decline was their pricing strategy. More manufacturers started producing entry-level DSLR or mirrorless cameras at lower prices than before, meaning that the proposition value held by bridge cameras decreased significantly, thus making them less sought after by people who could add a little extra money for a better output through bigger sensors as well as interchangeable lenses. Finally, bridge cameras became restricted to smaller market niches. Professionals and enthusiasts preferred having DSLRs and mirrorless systems, which could give them higher performance levels. At the same time, smartphones suit casual photographers by being readily accessible where they want it, anywhere, anytime, without thinking about how to carry bulky equipment around without any problem at all. Thus, bridge camera manufacturers needed clarification about who they were targeting since they fell between these two categories. Final Thoughts Bridge cameras may be fading, but their legacy lives on. They introduced features like ISO and exposure to hobbyists, paving the way for more advanced photography. Even today, their influence is felt in high zoom compacts and user-friendly interfaces. Bridge cameras were a stepping stone, and their spirit of innovation will continue to shape the future of photography. What do you think? Did bridge cameras play a significant role in your photography journey?